please, first off, don't let the thumbnail fool you. I have friends, okay? Hi friends, my name is Hunter Brene. I am a country bumpkin residing in the beautiful Seoul, South Korea. Today, we're gonna talk about friendships. The purpose of me making this video is to have a discussion, have a conversation around friendship and how we show up in those friendships. Also maybe even how to mend friendships or how to let friendships go and thinking about how to make new friends. We're in 2022, our world is slowly opening back up and for months we have been isolated from one another. Learning how to communicate appropriately and what to look for in a budding friendship I think is really important. What really pushed me to make this video was my experience last summer. At the time, I was at my lowest emotionally. I didn't really understand my purpose in Korea and I was thinking, who can I talk to to really get these emotions out? Who can I call, can I message and go out and get a coffee? And it was really sad because I didn't feel like I had anyone who I could open up to about such a personal thing. It really opened my eyes and it really made me look inward and think about, okay, how am I showing up for people in friendships? And am I creating a space where they feel like we can build a true friendship? Am I showing up superficially? Honestly, my most raw emotions were, am I the problem? Like, is it me? Am I the one that makes it difficult to build friendships? I think this is where my journey to thinking about my relationships with people really started. Up to that point, I was in this, I want to be selfish mentality. And that's good because coming from a America, I was constantly thinking about other people and how I can please and perform for other people. And when I came to Korea, I told myself to be selfish, but I thought, did I take it too far? Did I make it so that I was putting myself so far above other people that I wasn't even aware of how I was coming off? So that was the start of my internal, personal journey into discovering more about myself, more about how I present myself to others. And yeah, I really want to share some of the things that I learned along the way, things that I learned about myself, and hopefully some things that maybe you can implement into your life and start conversations about. So number one was social media relationships. A lot of the friendships, or I guess I should use a different word because I totally, I stripped back the word friendship because I, I was calling everybody my friend. If I met you one time, if we had a conversation on Instagram, on Twitter, whatever, I said they're my friend. I had to reassess that thinking because every Everyone who is in your life, everyone who you have interactions with, they're not always your friend because your friend is someone you're connected with, someone who has your best interest at heart, someone who understands your heart, someone who wants to support you and ride with you through this journey. I couldn't say that everyone who I had met was to that level of connectedness with me. First, I peeled back the word friendship and I started with just acquaintances. So back to what I was saying. <laughs> the first thing that I thought about was a lot of my relationships were through social media. I I want to say that building connections through social media is vastly important here. It's a great foot in the door, but a lot of my relationships were sold on social media. For me, quality time face-to-face -face with people is how I build connectedness. Because I had so many of these relationships that hadn't transferred into a physical face-to-face -face conversation, I just didn't feel the connectedness. So I thought, hey, how about we reach out to some of these people that we're really close to and try to make plans to connect. So messaging, saying, hey, how about next weekend we meet up and blah, 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 and do blah, blah, blah. Putting that first foot forward to try to turn some of those relationships into something more. There are a lot of stigmas around making friendships on apps like HelloTalk or Tinder or even Bumble now has the BFF option. However you choose to get your foot in the door with people is totally your choice. I encourage you to think further beyond that and further that friendship or that relationship with that person beyond the screen because what ends up happening is conversations become very mundane very like hey how are you doing how's your day what'd you eat for lunch blah 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 it's hard to really grow deep with someone if it's only through a phone screen and they don't really get a sense of you as a real person so the next thing 
that I really investigated was quantity versus quality. I have always had this dream when I get married and also when I pass away and have my funeral <laughs> that the whole area is just full of people. It's funny now because I thought, oh, like I'm gonna have like 500, 600 people at my wedding. Like I have so many friends. I'm gonna have to have like buses to bring the people. It's totally, it's totally unrealistic. I'll say for some people that is their reality, but to the average you and me, it's really unrealistic to think that you can invest that much energy into that many people. In this time period, I really had to like put a pin in my bubble and burst it. So assessing quantity over quality, I really had to tell myself, hey, it is okay to have a small number of friends who are genuine, who are really there for you and supportive of you. It was a really tough pill to swallow, learning that like you might not have that many people at your wedding, but that's okay because the people who will be there are really down for you and they're really there for you. My next thought process was the blame game. Oh, this, this, this one took a while because I was really blaming myself. I was telling myself that I'm the reason why I I am incapable of fostering and maintaining real friends. This has been a trend throughout my life, not being able to stay connected to people. If you're in that state of mind, that mindset, that sort of thinking, that, that ain't it. You are absolutely capable and worthy and deserving of amazing friendships. I'm saying that to myself too. There is no one who should ever make you feel bad, including yourself, for you growing and I guess transitioning as a person. If things are not meant for you, like they're not meant for you. I blamed myself a lot. In the end, where I settled was I'm not perfect. This other person is not perfect. As you're stepping on toes and life is happening and you're growing together or, or growing apart, it's a natural part of human social relationships. It's a natural part of growing. It's a natural part of adulting. Now the way that I'm looking at it is I'm a bomb friend. I have a lot to offer to anyone who is in my life, whether it be acquaintance, friend, situationship, enemy, whatever. I shouldn't downplay what I bring to the table because I bring a big feast. That was good. I'm keeping that. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me. You're not the bad person. You're not the one to blame. And you're sifting through life, figuring yourself out in the same way that other people are. So give yourself grace and give yourself time. The last thing that I learned on this internal deep dive into self and friendship was that I got to do normal stuff in order to build normal friendships. At the time when I felt friendless, <laughs> it's funny now because I have friends. I have many friends. I, again, I'm going to continue to reiterate in this video, I have friends. I've grown. I've grown in a year. Anyways, at the time when I was struggling, I was not really putting myself out there. I went to work, I came home, and I would just stay at home. On the weekend, I may meet one person on Saturday, but otherwise, I would totally isolate myself from the rest of the world. It's not bad to invest in self, but it's not right to expect to build relationships and friendships with people if you're not putting yourself out there and foster those relationships and friendships. What I decided to do was find hobbies here in Korea. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I am hardcore into boxing. Right now, I've made so many friends through boxing that it's not even funny. Getting yourself out of the house after work or after class, that is the best and most effective way to connect with people. So other normal, normal stuff includes going to cafes, going out on the weekends. Everyone is not into clubbing, but but there are places you can have fun here in Korea that doesn't always involve drinking. There are a lot of applications as well. There are Facebook groups, all kinds of options for you to find what fits you. You might not be into boxing, but you might be into dance class or golfing. Virtual golfing is really popular here. If that works, there you go. Do stuff that normal people do to make normal friends. Check. Of course, with friendship, there's always going to be conflict. I think it's really important in friendship to weigh your options on how important the friendship is to you. When you have an argument, you absolutely have the choice to extend the olive branch, have a conversation, have the opportunity to say your piece, and then choose to continue on in the friendship or continue on in separate directions. Personally, I always felt like I had to make up with friends, even if they were toxic in my life. I felt like, oh, I have to reconcile with them. Like, I need them in my life. 
situation. I learned there's a really big difference between needing someone and wanting someone in your life. I want to acknowledge that there are situations and relationships where you realize that not having that person in your life is more beneficial. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with deciding, you know what, this relationship that we've had together, it has run its course. And I think that we are both growing and moving in different directions. Think about how people fit into your life. If they are there for you or if they are there against you. So to, I guess, wrap up the topic of issues and friendships, I really learned how important it is to meet people in the middle. Having a 50-50 friendship is so important. Having difficult conversations where you have to learn about your faults in many ways and also express someone else's faults to them, it's, it's not fun. Pruning, it's painful. When you have two people that really care about each other and you want what's best for each other and you're in each other's lives to help each other grow and to pour into each other, those conversations are really important. Those kind of conversations really help build trust. They help build connectedness and it's natural. I think conflict is really natural. Conflict resolution is also very natural. So yeah. Okay, let's get into some rapid fires. I didn't really know where to include these tips, so I'll just <laughs> lay them out here in the video. The first thing I wanna talk about is relatability and party friends. Being in Korea, you find the perfect bar, the perfect club that works for you. You know, you're going to that one, you're seeing the same people there, you're making friends with them. That's totally fine. That is absolutely fine. What I encourage is just as many friends as you have for those nights out, make sure that you have an even or even even more an even or more number of friends for nights in having a good mix is very important number two is put yourself out there i know you're in a new country there's a lot of stuff happening and it can be overwhelming i know for me it was really overwhelming at the beginning truly the only way you will be able to build long lasting at least korea withstanding friendships is to put yourself out there message people on social media you know slide into those dms don't be afraid to reach out and try. Number three, not holding new friendships and relationships to the standard of old ones. There are new friendships for a reason. Putting them into the same box that you put old friends who may have been toxic, who may have caused you trauma, who may have just not been right for you. It's really unfair to this new group of people or this new person. Giving people the benefit of the doubt up front can really help foster a really strong bond that could progress into the future. And who knows, that could end up being your best friend but you could have lost them because you put them in the box number four is reconnecting with old friends in the journey to find new people to connect with it's not ever a bad idea to think about people who you had a connection with before maybe you fell apart because of time or distance if they may be back in your home country there's never an issue with reconnecting with someone seeing if you can pick up where you left off of course make sure that this person was not toxic for you or maybe you feel less than or didn't support you maybe that's not the best relationship or friendship to try to reconcile consider reconnecting with people when it could in your mind be beneficial to you <laughs> number five working relationships so i can't speak for other countries but back in america there is a stigma around how vulnerable you should be with your work friends i would say when it comes to being friends with your co-teachers it is important to enter those relationships very carefully Yes, you can be very connected with the teachers at your school, but at the end of the day, you are colleagues. It is possible, because I've experienced it, it is possible to be really close with your co-teachers and the other teachers at your school on the same level as like a real friendship, especially depending on their English level and your Korean level. Enter those relationships with the same caution that you would any other relationship. Maybe in some cases a little bit more because you work with them. It, it can be a little muddy if ever you tell them something that they think the principal or vice principal would need to know. It can be really difficult and a tough situation to put them in. I know for Hagwon teachers, sometimes there are many other native English speakers at your school. So there's more opportunity to connect with your colleagues, coworkers. But even still, unfortunately, we live in a, a world where people just don't like to see others succeed. So enter those friendships with caution and fill out someone's vibe before totally up chucking your whole life story onto them. That's a life tip is be cautious of what you tell people because you just you never know who's for you and who's against you and you want to keep keep your cards close to your chest. 
I think that wraps today's topic around friendship. Please keep the conversation going in the comments down below. And also feel free to, at any point, message me on Instagram or any of my other social media if you want to talk or you have more questions. Korea, even still, even despite it all, is an amazing place. And I've made some really good friendships here, some that have withstood time, some that have not. And you know, I mourn the ones that I've lost, but I celebrate the ones that I have now. And if you are coming to Korea, I send you positive vibes. And I hope that in all of your experiences here, that you meet some bomb people that make you feel just as special as I know that you are. No matter where you are, I hope that you have a great day or afternoon or evening. And I'll see you next time. Bye.